Okay, welcome to part two of the RCA Model 5T1 radio chassis restoration. In part one, we confirmed that the power transformer was good, replaced all of the old bad capacitors. We actually got the radio playing. But part two, we need to replace this old rotten speaker cable that's crumbling. We already replaced one wire here. And then we'll do an alignment and do some other task, and this chassis sh chassis should be ready to go. And for our speaker cable, I have this uh, salvaged cable that I removed from a television set that I EOL'd. It should do fine for a replacement speaker cable. It may not be quite as long as the original cable, but it doesn't have to be super long. Just so just so everything will fit in the cabinet as it should. Okay, here's our new cable ready to be installed into the radio chassis. We have everything taped up and with heat shrink tubing so it won't cause any problems. Our blue lead will go to the plate of the output tube. The red lead will go to the B plus input to the audio output transformer and the yellow lead will be our field coil. The one thing that didn't dawn on me whenever I cut this cable off the deflection yoke is this is solid wire. I'd, I'd really rather have stranded wire for this application because stranded wire doesn't break as easily when it's bent. However, I can still use this, although I'm going to have to figure out a way to better secure this cable where it won't be flipping and flopping around. Here on the end, I'm not really worried about this end because I have it taped up and with heat shrink tubing applied, so that end should be okay. Okay, here we are, the new speaker cable soldered in place. I have a knot tied right here to keep the cable from being pulled out of the chassis. And by the way, here's the underside of the newly recapped chassis. I don't believe I showed this to you in part one. Have our electrolytics mounted on terminal strips here. And on the top side of the chassis, in order to give the speaker cable a little more stability, I installed a rubber grommet here on the chassis where the original cable went through and then I pulled a plastic cable tie as tight as I could around right here and that pretty much helps prevent this cable from wiggling too much. When it's in the set it won't be a, as big of a problem but I just don't want any excess movement while I'm working on this thing. don't want to break those wires. Now, if you're doing this at home, I would strongly recommend you using stranded wire for this purpose. But solid wire is all I had on hand at the moment, so I made that work. Now we get back to the question. Would okay, you we're still playing, so obviously we didn't knock nothing out of line whenever we replaced the speaker cable. Uh, a couple of callers, let me go to Ray in uh, Mandeville. How are you, Ray? I'm okay. How you doing? Ray, what do you think? I believe this is 870 WWL coming in at about 815 in the evening. Still daylight outside. Okay, we're ready to align this now. We have our AC voltmeter connected to the voice call of the speaker. We have our dial pointer calibrated and we have our signal generator ready to go. We've already allowed the receiver and the signal generator the customary 15 minutes to warm up. And here are our, our alignment instructions, and we'll basically do what the instructions say, starting at step one and going down to the bottom here. Now, most AM radios have an IF frequency of 455 kilocycles. Well, this is one of those non-standard radios, its IF frequency is actually 460 kilocycles. So you want to always make sure you know what your IF frequency is before you start. And step number one, connect our generator to the 6D6 IF grid cap. 
through a .001 microfarad capacitor set to 460 KC. Our tuning dial should be set somewhere between 550 and 750 KC where there's no signal. And adjust the second IF transformer L10 and L11 for maximum output. And when doing any kind of radio alignment, you want to keep your signal generator output as low as possible to get a usable reading. For example, you don't want you don't want this because all that's going to do is cause the AVC circuit to kick in and give you inaccurate readings. So you want to keep it just low enough to get a usable signal. And judging by what I'm finding out here, I don't think the IF is really that bad off, actually. But since we have it connected, we'll peek out everything and get it as good as we can. We want to adjust the second IF transformer first. That's this guy here. Have one adjustment on top and then another one under the bottom of the chassis. Of course, we'll have to move the chassis to where we can get to it. And we'll adjust this for maximum output. Well, the second IF transformer was still spot on. Now we'll move our signal generator input to the uh, grid of the 6A8 mixer tube here and then we'll adjust the first IF transformer for peak output. So now we'll need to turn down the gain on our signal generator. That's ought to be about right. Now we'll adjust this transformer for maximum. Now they want us to connect the signal generator to the antenna terminal through a 200 picofarad capacitor. Set the generator to 460 KC, no signal on the short wave band, and adjust the wave trap 4, which is L1 minimum output. Okay, here we are connected up, and here's what we adjust for minimum. And we are set to the short wave band. Well, getting louder. We don't want louder. Okay, that's probably about it right there. So that takes care of the wave trap. And for the sake of time, I'll just go on down through all of these other steps and adjust them as per the instructions here. It's pretty self-explanatory. The case and think about it. Okay, that all Frankly, about do it. The time to review this Let it case run a while, and if nothing with, happens, it never we'll put it all back in the all. cabinet, and it ought to and be this ready to go. Is the Huckabee report? Here to the ground, and your children. And here we you. are, back together, and they working will pretty not good. Leave in you one. And he entered the temple. We still and began need to, to cast take out. care of the cosmetic issues. Replace this cracked dial lens and do a little clean up on the cabinet and chassis, but. Functionally, it seems to be in good shape. And he was teaching daily in the temple, but the scribes. Yeah, a little Fleetwood Mac coming from some distant radio station. Not going to get a whole lot of distant stations. It's still daylight outside, but we are getting some things off in the distance. Near the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of the disciples saying, Go into the village. This is probably the best sounding AM station in our area. 
course, it'd be a lot nicer if it was a different format, like rock and roll oldies from the 50s through the early 80s. I think that's WDIA out of Memphis. Pulling your backbone. That's exactly what I need. And he should be punished for that. Right. Yeah, this broken dial lands is catching the pointer. See if we can get anything on short wave. Of course, this short wave band basically covers the old police band, so probably not going to be much on it. Well, I see how the dial pointer got all out of kilter. I tell you what, let's just get this out of the way. Well, here's a ham radio operator. And yes, I'm going to have to realign the dial pointer because it got caught on this broken lens and it got it all out of kilter again. Okay. As they approached there, Jesus called to Okay, there you go. The 1936 RCA Model 5T1. There. All ready to go, and hopefully we'll play for another almost 80 years. Uh, a young okay, there you go. Donkey that was there. We'll do was something else up. a little bit later on. And nobody had Hope ever you got even something out of all of this mess. He said to untie it, bring it here, and have a good and day. If anyone asks you why you're doing these things, just tell them this: the Lord has need of it. Entonces envió a dos de sus discípulos, no I thought we'd end with a few seconds of WDIA playing some soul music from decades gone by.